Good afternoon. What uh, we will, are going to talk about today is basically looking at um, an analysis of the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, their COVID-19 forecasting model. Um, my name is Alan Featherstone. I am head of agricultural economics at uh, Kansas State University. This work is uh, done in conjunction with an undergraduate student, a senior, Julia Maddock, in the Department of Agricultural Economics. Certainly, um, you've uh, understood that the COVID-19 virus is having a major effect around the globe. And uh, within that, um, in order to fight that, it's had a um, major effect on the uh, global economy. Um, at least in the U.S., the advice that politicians are provided are based off uh, these COVID-19 model forecasts. Um, in recent uh, um, briefs by the uh, Trump administration, it's been clear that the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, IHME, at the University of Washington is playing a large role in the formation of, uh, of policy, um, both uh, from a health perspective and an economic perspective. Um, the data used in this analysis is sourced from their website. In terms of to give a little bit of an indication in terms of just the magnitude of how this is affecting the economy, um, during the last two weeks more than 10 million U.S. workers um, filed for unemployment due to a shutdown of a significant share of the U.S. economy. It's important really to document and understand the ex post performance of the prediction model and the revisions that are made um, in that predictive model. Um, the reason for this is uh, um, um, hopefully we won't have uh, pandemics in the future, but um, it really is important to understand where our models are correct and where our models are not correct. Um, using the information provided on the uh, website on the previous uh, page, essentially it explains their modeling approach. They're using a statistical forecasting model using a parameterized, parameterized spline. In terms of looking at this, the spline function basically um, has an increasing and an increasing rate function, then it has an inflection point, and then it increases at a decreasing rate until it uh, uh, eventually um, shapes off. And so it does have that uh, sigmoid shape. Um, for those that have uh, um, done some logistic um, estimation in economics, um, it is a logistic type, functional type, type form. Um, this uh, model is solved using curve fit, um, and it's uh, fit in, in log space. Again, um, the, the key thing is, is it's a fairly standard approach in economics sometimes to, uh, to look at this. Um, one of the things that is important is the uh, um, slope or the spline function in there, the sigmoid shape is a very important function um, with regards to looking at this. Um, this was estimated using a bounded nonlinear optimization um, approach. Um, they use the LBFGSB algorithm that uh, requires derivatives to be uh, um, provided in the uh, estimating process. Um, one of the things I think that is important to realize is that it is bounded, and basically that means that the parameter estimates do end up having to be um, positive. Um, they ended up using local and national government um, data um, from, and also WHO, um, the World Health Organization um, data um, websites. And one of the major sources for the U.S. data or the U.S. information is the uh, John Hopkins coronavirus um, data. Um, in terms of the uh, original article that uh, um, is based upon while it's available on the web, um, it is important to understand that as of uh, April 7th, um, it hasn't been uh, um, accepted under the peer review process. And so it is a preprint. Again, that's a common approach in, uh, in uh, um, economics and uh, um, other disciplines. Um, where um, information is, is available to the public ahead of time before it's peer reviewed. Um, but it is important to, to real, realize that it hasn't went through the peer process. One of the things that we're going to end up doing is uh, um, show some graphs here that basically look at how well um, the model is forecasting. Um, we're going to look at uh, um, the U.S. as a whole. We're going to look at uh, New York and then we're going to look at Kansas. Um, again, uh, obviously Kansas is uh, um, um, 
simply because that's where Kansas State University is located, um, but also um, New York in terms of that's uh, at, at least right now as of April 7th where um, the uh, um, major uh, um, outbreak is within in the U.S. and then we'll look at the U.S. as a whole. In terms of where I get my estimates of uh, um, the uh, coronavirus uh, death uh, statistics is from Wordle Meters and uh, um, it's available on the uh, website that's located below. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the numbers in Kansas and uh, we're going to use the uh, projection model that uh, is in the paper that's in uh, peer-reviewed um, March 26th. And uh, one of the things that uh, you can look at by downloading data off their website is basically the expected. And so essentially the mean in purple is the expected um, deaths on a daily basis um, for Kansas. And then I have two green lines here. Um, obviously the lower one is the lower bound and then the upper is the upper bound. But basically what this indicates is there's essentially a 95% probability according to the modeling um, to be between those green lines. And so that kind of gives a 2.5% um, uh, lower bound. Um, so there's a 2.5% you'd be below the lower bound, 2.5% you'd be above the upper bound. And then the line in red um, is the uh, um, data that uh, um, we got off the Worldometer um, website that uh, indicates the actual um, daily death projections or actual um, deaths in Kansas. Um, again, I've cross-referenced these with the uh, Kansas uh, um, KDHE, Kansas Department of Health and Environment, um, to uh, uh, essentially um, um, verify that the numbers um, at the world o meter um, do uh, do uh, do track. Um, one of the things you will end up seeing, and this information is through um, uh, essentially the report on uh, April seventh is that uh, um, the uh, numbers in Kansas have went up and down um, in terms of if, if you look at it, there was uh, one day where um, it was above um, and uh, um, several days where it was below. Um, again, it's important to realize when you are um, predicting in small samples that uh, um, um, certainly it's very difficult to uh, um, to, to predict uh, small samples and uh, um, I, I think that's what you're seeing going on. If you look at the U.S. Uh, daily numbers in terms of uh, the world of meter numbers do not come in until uh, um, in the evening when all the states finally report and so this is only through um, April 6th um, and so I don't have the April 7th numbers here. Um, again, you can see the pattern in terms of how it's tracked um, with regards to uh, um, the uh, um, original projections, the original uh, probability density function, so to speak, uh, or the original uh, um, path of the uh, um, um, daily, daily deaths. If we look at New York, um, again, you can kind of uh, look for yourself and uh, draw your own conclusions in terms of how, uh, how accurate the uh, um, numbers are being projected. Um, but again, um, um, as of 4-7, un unfortunately the uh, number of deaths were very close to um, the original projections that were made on uh, March 26th. In terms of uh, cumulative, uh, cumulative is also important to look at. Um, certainly uh, um, those numbers become uh, very important in, in terms of uh, um, looking at the overall um, impact, impact of uh, the uh, COVID uh, um, um, virus. And uh, again, if you um, see this, and in some respects, it's, uh, the uh, bounds are very tight, close up, and then as you get further away, those bounds become much, uh, much wider. Um, in terms of you can see that uh, the uh, um, Kansas cumulative death toll is uh, um, outside the uh, um, um, 95% confidence interval. It's been running a little bit below at least what the March 26th model was. Um, if you look at the U.S., in some respects, it's a little bit below the uh, um, 
mean lines. Um, however, you can end up uh, um, seeing that it is within that 95% uh, uh, confidence interval. And so um, from that perspective, um, the uh, actual cumulative death toll um, in the U.S. has been within the, uh, the uh, confidence interval. And then if we uh, look at the uh, New York cumulative uh, death projections, the uh, mortality rate, um, you will also see that from a cumulative perspective, it appears that the original model, um, at least so far, um, we are um, um, kind of tracking um, where the, uh, the, the predictions were, were made, certainly very close um, to the estimates. One of the things I think that's also interesting to look at is just uh, um, how the uh, revised forecasts um, occur over time. And so um, the model has kind of come out with uh, information um, using data through uh, March 29th, using data through the 30th, the 31st, the 1st, and the 5th. And so what I've done here is just basically just forecast the mean. Um, the 29th is in purple. The uh, um, 30th is in green, the uh, 31st is in blue, um, the uh, red is uh, the 1st of April, and then the uh, um, last forecast that is available is in, in yellow. Um, one of the things you'll end up uh, um, seeing is certainly yellow um, up through these data is basically the actual data and then they have the projections for that. And so um, some of the information here is just the actual uh, um, information that we've seen in, um, with regards to that. But uh, um, for example, the 29th has uh, um, the 29th data in and then it's forecast um, from March 30th forward. Um, the April 5th uh, um, forecast uh, has information in through the 4th and uh, then from the fifth forward, it has, uh, has forecasts. Um, one of the things you'll see is the latest revision of the model um, in Kansas certainly um, decreased um, the um, daily expected deaths um, by quite a bit. Um, in terms of if we look at this for the U.S. as a whole, in some respects, the most recent revision increased the, uh, the deaths, and in, in some respects, it does appear that uh, um, um, they have uh, um, lengthened out, or the model has lengthened out the amount of time um, that uh, um, um, we will be uh, um, struggling with this through uh, a little ap further in April than, uh, than maybe the original models um, ended up projecting. If we end up looking at, uh, at New York, in, in some respects, and we'll see this kind of in um, some of the upcoming figures, um, in some respects, these trace um, very closely. And so revisions um, being made to the New York model have not been large in terms of they've been uh, um, very close to uh, um, what was originally done. We look at the cumulative forecast, looking at the models, and here you can see some fairly substantial differences in terms of uh, the models uh, um, March 29th through April 1st. In, in some respects, we're estimating um, about uh, 600 uh, deaths in Kansas in terms of uh, um, the original model, the uh, um, um, mean um, 329, basically through August 4th, um, predicted 687 deaths in Kansas. And then if you look at the yellow line, essentially um, that now predicts 265 deaths in Kansas um, through um, August 4th. And, and so looking at that, essentially the revisions from the original all the way to the last revision has basically been a 61% uh, reduction in the uh, number of deaths. If we look at the uh, U.S. models, again, the purple line there, which in some respects is covered under the green line, um, in some respects, it seems that uh, there's a little bit more slope to the curve, um, but in terms of uh, where it ends up in terms of death projections, in terms of on 329, um, basically the cumulative deaths in the U.S. were 82,141, and essentially um, the uh, um, model of 4 or 5 basically um, ended up with a projection, mean projection of 81,766. 
And so uh, um, certainly um, if you look at it between the two models, the original model and the uh, model as of uh, um, April 5th, there's a negative 0.4% uh, uh, decrease in the uh, number of deaths. Looking at the uh, New York numbers, you can uh, see the uh, difference between the purple and the uh, orange line. In some respects, um, you'll see that they're very close. If you look at the expected cumulative deaths, um, it's uh, as of the uh, March 29th forecast, it was 15,546. In terms of as of the uh, um, uh, March 5th forecast, it was 15,610618. And so um, looking at that, essentially the uh, forecasted um, mortality increased by about 0.4%. And so um, concluding thoughts is that uh, this model has been used to drive policy decisions. These policy decisions um, have had um, huge ramifications on the agricultural economy and then also the general economy um, in the U.S., but also um, both from a, uh, a worldwide perspective on the uh, U.S. economy and the agricultural economy. Looking at this, it does appear that uh, um, for New York, um, the uh, model has been fairly accurate through um, April 7th. Um, it does appear to be less accurate um, through April 7th for Kansas. Um, there have been fairly large um, revisions to the U.S. in the Kansas numbers from um, the uh, first model in, in terms of uh, um, looking at uh, um, the uh, um, numbers up and, and down. Um, in some respects, the U.S. numbers um, from the first forecast and the most recent are very close. Um, however, the Kansas numbers are quite different. Um, in terms of if you look at the revisions from model to model in New York, um, they have been fairly small. And so um, there just hasn't been a lot of change with regards to this. In terms of hopefully this gives a little bit of a picture in terms of maybe where we are, at least according to the models with this uh, uh, COVID pandemic. Um, one of the things that uh, Julia and I will uh, be looking at um, as we go forward is we'll continue to uh, um, look at how these models are uh, predicting and how the revisions are uh, um, changing. Um, but also we're going to uh, be looking at uh, um, um, relating these numbers to numbers in the economy such that uh, um, we can uh, get an indication of how um, changes in uh, um, the uh, COVID um, cases, um, how that is, uh, is driving um, numbers from the U.S. economy. So with that, um, thank you for your attention.